Here to help us understand the political dynamic at play here, we have former National Security Advisor, Professor, Professor Clarita Carlos. Professor Carlos, good evening. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Hi, good evening to all three of you. <laughs> Uh, Professor, you heard our reporting about the former president's visit to Beijing. Of course, this is coming on the back of a very eventful week. We had the arbitral ruling anniversary. We now also have the ICC decision. How did you read into all of this? Well, okay. <laughs> this will require more time than uh, what the show would give me, but uh, <laughs> let's take it one, one at a time. Uh, I'm listening to the commentaries of some of your resource persons in regard to the ICC. Ari Roque, who is my student, a very fine scholar, is correct. Uh, the ICC uh, you know, imperatives can only kick in if we are doing nothing in our local courts. And that is not true. This is not to, uh, to uh, protect or to support uh, the alleged EJK during the first two years of the 30th time after we withdrew from the ICC. This is to indicate that indeed on the ground, things are moving in terms of filing cases against people identified with this uh, extrajudicial killing. Please note, countries who are not members of the ICC like the United States, have committed egregious crimes against humanity. Is anyone asking them to account for their acts? This is not again anti-US. I am a scholar and I'm looking at it from all even bases. So if you are not a member of the ICC, pwede ka na magpatay ng mga tao, ng genocide. Hindi ka kakabuli ng ICC kasi hindi ka member eh. Diba? Okay. Sino mga hinahabol nila? Ang hinahabol nila yung mga taga-Africa. Ano, yung hinahabol nila yung mga developing countries na hindi maka-defend ang sarili nila. So, ang Amerika nga, sabi sa kanila, isa sa inyo pumasok dito sa ano, sa Amerika, hindi kayo makakapasok kasi may immigration kami. So, let's say the same thing, no? Okay. May ginagawa kami dito sa domestic sphere. So, hindi kayo makapasok dito kasi wala kayong visa. Yan yeah. lang kayo sa airport yeah, if it comes yeah. to that. Professor, that's okay. fair. Pero if I could just have you comment first on the meeting between uh, President, uh, former President Duterte and President Xi Jinping. No? Kasi uh, he is a former state of head. And is it usual for him to be uh, you know, received at the state guest house in China? Well, if you are a political scientist, you will read so many things about that. Did you see their body language? Xi Jinping palagi nakangiti. Nakita mo ba si Xi Jinping meeting with other political leaders? Palaging suplado yan, may smirk. Tulad ko, palaging may smirk sa face niya. Yun ang default niya eh. Okay, but remember, kasaysayan, di ba? Ang ganda ng istorya nila from 2016 to 2022. And maganda yung sinabi ni President Bongbong na alam niyang pupunta si Duterte doon. I'm sure Duterte had the decency to tell Bongbong, ay punta ako sa China ha. Okay, meron tinatawag sa international law, good offices. Good offices, gumit na ka, di an interlocutor between two countries who are not talking to each other. And I suspect, my hunch is that uh, he's there as an interlocutor because of the increasing tension between Philippines mm -hmm. and China mm -hmm. for reasons which all of us already know. That said, if you have a sinister mind, you will think other things, isn't it? And yung sinabi nga nung isang resource person nyo, si Manhit, na ina-undermine niya yung present administration. I don't think so. With all due respect, I disagree with him. Any effort for us not to go to war, for us not to be, uh, you know, uh, to have our legs pulled into the war of the United States in regard to Taiwan is good. So I salute uh, President Duterte for uh, going to Xi Jinping. Nakita niyo yung component niyan sa kapaligid niya? Uh, si uh, Wang Yi. You know, Wang Yi met with me. Si Wang Yi kasi is the top foreign policy ano, minister yan. Nasa Politburo siya ngayon. When I met with Wang Yi, ang ganda ng usapan namin, more than one hour kami nag-meet dito nung NSA ako. And this is where we should go. Let us move away from the uh, conflict on territory and sovereignty and let us talk functional cooperation. This is one of my memoranda to Bongbong Marcos before I resign as NSA. Professor, what leverage do you think can we get from this meeting? Sabi nga po ni uh, President Marcos, kahit pa paano, sana may maayos, mayroon tayong makuha dito. And doesn't this run contrary to the statements of the President in the past months? 
when it comes to the West Philippine Sea? Well, as a matter of fact, it is in sync with what he declared at the time of his inauguration, where he said, China is our neighbor, our partner, and we're going to flesh that out. Unfortunately, uh, you know, things did not pan out a week after he visited China, which was the first week of January, and the articulation of their leadership, the leadership Xi Jinping, and what they were doing on the ground, they did not come together. So every effort for us, for these two countries, to make more robust our relationship is a positive move. So let us not diminish the visit of Duterte. All right, we're going to have to leave that there for now. Thank you so much for joining us, former National Security Advisor Clarita Carlos.